who would like to remind you that it's a long way to empty in a Datsun. A long way. And by the Miller Brewing Company. Brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. It's a very special thing to have Monday Night Football in the National Capital. It always has been. And we have a very special pride tonight to be able to start the second decade of Monday Night Football. We've got, a, we think, a great contest coming up and a great week coming up, a special Thursday night edition as the Rams go to Tampa to go against the Buccaneers, a replay of their playoff game of a year ago, perhaps. In the meantime, Washington must do it tonight without John Riggins, if they're to do it, even as Dallas must do it without Roger Staubach, as you already know. The Riggins graphic and figures speak for themselves. He was one of the finest backs in the National Football League. He is now on retired reserve. So he'll not be playing football this year. And two, one of the hottest, one of the most traditional rivalries in the league between two clearly excellent and contending teams. To tell you more about the Washington Redskins starting his 10th year, on Monday Night Football. I've grown accustomed to your face. You almost make my Thank day you, begin. The Gipper. You're growing on me. <laughs> <laughs> it is a game I'd like to be home watching, quite frankly, because that is the kind of football Dallas and Washington plays. And Howard showed you at the top of the show what happened in the last game of the season between these two teams. Dallas won the Eastern Division of the NFC. Washington lost by one point. They don't particularly like each other, these two football teams. And for Joey Theismann coming in tonight, well, you just saw his confidence blossom a year ago when no one was looking over his shoulder as Billy Cummer did for a couple of years. Three years in Canada, came to the Redskins in 1974, didn't start till 76, and last year he was the second-ranked quarterback in the NFC behind, well, you guessed it, the one and only Roger Staubach. Roger will not be here tonight. He's in Dallas. He'll be watching the game along with you. And, Don, you left the Cowboys one time as a quarterback. There's a little pain and a little anguish. Yeah, there's a little pain when you when you leave out of that thing. And one of the things that, uh, you know, Roger's not going to be here. We've said that a bunch of times. And um, as a matter of fact, so it's right, there he is right there, Roger Stavak. He's not here. Well, he won't be the same without Roger, but then, uh, hey, nothing ever is. One of the things when you come into a game like this, I think any player, whether it's Roger Stavak, Danny White, anybody, you want to play in football games like this. There's a lot of pressure on Danny White, but I don't really think that the pressure is going to be the, the key thing tonight. Dallas is coming in as an underdog, and that's kind of unusual. The rivalry with it, uh, these two teams have had has been discussed. It's really true. The Cowboys, uh, for the first time in an awful long time, are not picked to win their division. They're here to play Washington. I bet you there's not a guy down there on that field who would change places with anybody else tonight because that's what kind of night it is when the Cowboys and the Redskins get together. The Cowboys got some trouble in the secondary. We'll get to that a little bit later, but right now I want this game to get started. Get my friend and yours, Shake Teller Worry. Let's get this thing kicked off, Frank. Let's go. Tom Landry beginning his 21st year, the winningest coach in the 70s. He has ha had a remarkable record since joining the Cowboys, the only coach they've ever had. 14 straight winning seasons, 13 trips to the playoffs, 11 division championships, five Super Bowls, winning Super Bowl six and Super Bowl 12. Jack Party, a great name in football, was a superb player with the Los Angeles Rams, later the Redskins, successful in the WFL. Successful at Chicago. Took them to playoffs for the first time since 1963. He brought the Redskins back last year to a 10 and 6 record. They're a better football team this year than they were a year ago and the Cowboys are hurting somewhat. Don mentioned their problems in the secondary. We will talk about it because it could be one of the key elements tonight. Vinnie Barnes, the veteran cornerback, an appendectomy this morning, out for three to four weeks. Charlie Waters, the all-pro safety, playing on a very gimpy knee, coming off off-scene knee surgery. And Dennis Thurman replacing a retired Cliff Harris at free safety. Cliff Harris, an all-pro for many years. Aaron Mitchell, a second-year man, will start at the right corner replacing Aaron Powell in the 34. So you would have to suspect the Redskins and Jack Pardee would like to exploit that weakness in the secondary. Dallas has won the toss. We're looking at James Doan, a rookie out of Mississippi State. He's 5'10", a 201-pounder. He can really fly. Mark Mosey will kick off for the Redskins as they began their 1980 football season. There is Mosley. Nine rookies have made this Cowboy football team, so obviously they are in a period of transition. 
So sit back and enjoy one of the classic matches in football. The Redskins against the Dallas Cowboys, and we are set to go. 55,000 wild-eyed Redskin fans, mostly, typically, boots and high, and this will be Jones. Jones turns the corner out over the 25, hits hard there. The special teams for the Redskins are always well-coached, and they execute so well. Offensively, we will see Danny White, of course, at quarterback number 11. Ron Springs has replaced Robert Newhouse, number 20. He's in there with Tony Dorsett. The wide receivers are Tony Hill, number 80, and Drew Pearson, number 88. There's the offensive line, a good offensive line, solid. They've been together. They're well coached. Both teams, 3-1 and one on the exhibition season, coming off final preseason losses, Dallas to Pittsburgh, Washington to Tampa Bay. got to be a factor for some of the young Cowboys tonight. There is no crowd like a Washington Redskins crowd. Dorsett, a little delay. Glittering along the line of uh -huh. Starts to the left and picks up a couple of yards hit there by Big Dave Butt. And he is having a fine preseason. Is the unpredictable one, Dave Butt, about a 290-pounder, if you will. There are your linebackers. We will probably see a great deal of Monty Coleman, number 53, a second-year man at linebacker. And there is the secondary. Three of them, pro bowlers. Lamar Parrish, Kenny Houston, and Joe Lavender. They're excellent. The cornerback, Parrish, Lavender, 16 interceptions between them a year ago. Second down and eight. Ball just short of the 28-yard line. Dorsett. Following Scott. Turns the corner out close to the 35-yard line. Hit there by Kenny Houston coming up in strong safety. Short of the first down, third down, and a long two. It's always wise to keep your eyes on Kenny Houston, number 27. Perennial, all pro, strong safety. And you'll remember his one-on-one -on -one tackle at the goal line that kept Walt Garrison from going in in 73. One of the classic plays on Monday Night Football. It really was an exceptionally good defensive play. The thing that Dallas is doing with Dorsett right now is not surprising either, I don't think, Howard, because two plays let him run with the ball. I'm sure they're going to try to get it to him as much as they can. Third down, long two. Tony Dorsett looking for his fourth consecutive 1,000-yard season. White wants to put it in the air. Wide open. The tight end is under 84, John Cosby. Uh -huh. Incomplete. Monty Coleman back there defending. We told you, you see a lot of him. He's a great athlete. 11th round draft pick, one of Bobby Pepper's specials, the personnel manager for the Redskins of a year ago. Fourth down, coming up. An example, Frank, where he had a receiver open for a first down play. The ball stayed in the air a little bit too long. Hung there a little bit too long. Kobe didn't have a, Kobe didn't have a chance to hold on to it. There's Coleman, Danny White. They did not want him to punt this year. They couldn't find anyone better. He was the second leading punter in the conference a year ago. Deep is Mike Nelm. Another Bobby Pepper find in Canada. He led the CAFL and returns a year ago, and he'll get the call at the 20. The setting up. Oh, that's good. Right there, that's good one. The Redskins and their special team. This is what they do to you, constantly. To the 39-yard line goes Mike Nell. Twice, Frank has mentioned Bobby Bethard, who, of course, is the general manager who came up from Miami, who used to be director of player personnel for Shula, helped develop those great Miami teams. He may now be the best in the business at the discovery, evaluation, and procurement of personnel. He's the core of these, this rebuilt Washington team. In the front off. Zero five. Five to five the Redskins fans. First and ten. 39 yard line for the Redskins. First possession. Buddy Hart on the left side. Out over the 30 yard line to the 31 and 32 yard line. Five's been in there with Buddy Hart at number 22. Also a young football player who came from Canada a year ago. Clarence Harmon is the fullback at the moment. We'll probably see Wilbur Jackson a little later. 83 Ricky Thompson. 80 John McDaniel. Wide receivers. And we will see a three wide receiver platoon as we see it right now. Art Monk, a rookie from Syracuse, the Redskins number one draft pick, their first draft pick that they've had since 1968. Second down, seven. Ball at the 42 yard line. He wanted to go to Monk. Monk was covered. He had to check off the heart of him. Mike Hagman made the stop. 
Good pressure there, Frank, from Larry Cole, who was playing in place of what a lot of people thought would be John Dutton. You see the defensive line, Harvey Martin. And by Brennick, the middleman, is always a key factor in any Dallas 4-3. And there is that shuffled secondary we told you about. We will repeat it because it could be a major factor tonight. Third down and five. The ball is a 44-yard out of the Redskins. We're just under one. First down. Getting the ball in front of Aaron Mitchell, who performed well against Pittsburgh, but he is, does not have the finesse to play that spot as of yet. I think both you and Dandy pinpointed the storyline as we look at Art Monk and his preseason record. Joe Walton, the offensive coordinator, the old giant teammate of Franks, doesn't like to go with his young one, but Monk is clearly in the mold of Charlie Taylor, one of the all-time greats. He has the capacity to be almost as good, if not as good. Redskin in Dallas territory at the 46-yard line. Monk back in there again. Motion man is John McDowell coming, coming toward you. This is Harmon right. coming up into defensively the play that Charlie Waters has been waiting to make since he had that surgery a year ago. He needed that. But the very point I wanted to make was, Frank, that both you and Dandy pinpointed what seems to me to have to be the storyline of this game. It's very hard under any circumstances to gain on the ground against that Dallas flex defense. They'll have to test that weakened secondary and go to the air. There was a loss of two. It'll be second down at 12. The ball now back at the 49-yard line of the Cowboys. Five hands off. This is Clarence Harmon. Left side. Foul up there defensively by the Dallas front four, the right side. Harvey Martin, Randy White there. It'll be third down and about 11. It's hard to do it going to the air when you wait until third down to do it. Additionally, <laughs> in the National Football League, you've got to throw early in each series against Dallas. True, Dandy? Well, it certainly does help. It puts a whole dimension to it. I think what you're talking about really is true because you've got, as Frank mentioned, Billy Barnes is out, so you've got a lot of new faces back in there. You would think that that's what Washington's going to try to do is check them early. A lot of young guys that haven't played much. Third down, long sixth man defensively. His name is Clinkscale for Dallas. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Hey, come on. And a quick look. It appeared that Theismann pulled away a little bit too early. That happens a lot of times on third down. Uh, everybody knows you're going to pass, particularly the quarterback. So he left a little early. Bob Gazeel was there for the Redskins. Fourth down, cutting. The Redskins bring out Mike Connell to replace the longtime kicker for the Redskins, Mike Bragg, who, by the way, is now over at Baltimore. Deep is James Jones. There he is on his own 10-yard line. The rookie from Mississippi State. Look, Redskins have had problems with that center on their special team. Fair catch called for and made at the 20-yard line, the Dallas Cowboys. 30-yard punt. The Cowboys will have their second possession at their own 20. And will be returning to a jam pack these days, when one makes a long trip, one must choose one's transportation very carefully. I choose luxury and economy. My Datsun 280ZX. It has all the luxuries to make a long trip comfortable, and it has the cruising range to make a long trip possible. The Datsun 280ZX. More miles per tank full than any other sports car you can buy. We all should have one. Wow! It's a long way to MG. Of all 1,800 life insurance companies in America, which company is giving a million permanent policy owners the chance to get more out of life? With an unprecedented decision to offer them $4 billion extra coverage with no increase in policy premiums. If this leadership and innovation is what you've been looking for, why not join the company that stands apart? Northwestern Mutual Life. Northwestern Mutual Life, the usually quiet company. Okay, here we go. A, little smile, a, little a carnival like atmosphere has prevailed over the nation's capital for the last week. Anticipation, of course, for this meeting. These two teams have been played so many great games over the years. Dallas now second possession. First and ten, the ball at their own 20 yard line. Ron Springs again. A pullback. Gets the ball, finds an opening over the right side behind Jim Cooper and Rafferty. And has spurts out over the 25, close to the 28. Gain of eight, second and two. You learned about Ron Springs a year ago. He's a Gil Brandt special. Gil, 
who is the ace discoverer and evaluator of personnel for the Cowboys and has done a remarkable job through the years. Discovered Springs at Ohio State, where he was not what you'd call a star, but Gill knew that he was a great track man, and Gill knew what his potential was. The baseball player, was he? Springs carries it for eight, second down and two. Hand off, Springs, first down. Out over the 30 to the 32-yard line. And he's in there because of a lot of talent. He is a good receiver. This they discovered, actually, he was injured as a senior at Ohio State. He led Ohio State in rushing as a junior, but the Dallas Cowboys were able to get him on a fifth round because of that injury as a senior. That's how you build football teams with people like Gil Brandt and, and Bobby Beathard. Exactly. And with guys like Ron Springs and who else? Ron Don't call. Let's try yeah. Tony Dorsett. Yeah. Back into the I formation on the first down. A delay again to Dorsett. And down goes Dorsett, taken there by 37-year-old Coy Bacon over the right side. Again, of maybe a yard. It'll be second and nine. Barry Brooks was the guy that kind of headed that one off, though. Frank, he's moved in there in place of a very familiar name when we do Redskin games. is Dyrone Talbert, uh, University of Texas. But Perry's had really good preseason, a little bit younger. And they say maybe a little bit quicker. And he's got the starting nod over Dyron now. Well, he went to Southern University. He quit for two weeks. During this training, that's an interesting little story you got. Yep. Here. Second yeah. and nine. Redskins into a prevent. Look out! White got a man open. There is a flag down, and Lamar Parrish has the ball. Well, uh, there is a flag down. There is. Parrish brings it back to the 30 again. There is a flag down at midfield. We saw that the intended receiver was Drew Pearson. Drew was. It is going to be a call against Parrish because Drew Pushed was not down. Yeah. Push them off. Yeah. Let's take a look at it again. Look at the time down. Danny's getting some good time. And man, that's nothing makes you feel any better than that. It's okay. A little bit of a wobble, but you see Pearson's down. Lamar came on the inside. Didn't get a clear shot of it, but he did push him down the outside. All right. Hey, is this an ABC we're working at? Wait a minute. That's awfully close call, as a matter of fact. It really was. But that's what it was. Push it. First down now. Out at the 39-yard line, Gene Barth, our referee here tonight with his crew of NFL officials. Lamar Parrish, a great veteran, came in a great trade engineered by Beathard, along with Floyd Bacon, who provided the pass rush. Wide receiver, Pearson and Hill, move to the left. Both bottom of your screen. Inside and on Dorsett. Spinning and twisting uh, yeah. out over the 40, close to the 43-yard line for a gain of four. It will be second down and six. Rich Malat, who's in there now at middle linebacker, number 57 in on the stop. You'll see a lot of action tonight because Olkowicz isn't 100%. Dorsett found Olkowicz of Maryland, a free agent. Malat, Penn State, where else? Linebacker, seventh round draft choice. And Monty Coleman from Central Arkansas, all last year. And that's why Washington went 10 and 6. Second and 6, the ball at the 43 yard line. Six minutes remaining in the first quarter. Dorsett gets the call. Big open in the right side, but he has to bring it inside, and he gets that little bit of extra effort going for him up just short of a first down at about the 48-yard line. So it'll be third down and long two as we take a look at Joe Theismann. Yeah, leaders are lonely, but they do live a good life. Yeah, he's worked his way into a great quarterback in the NFL. He's become a mature quarterback. Well, he had a great year last year. The word around Washington, they say, well, look, is he going to be one of those flash in the fans, or can he really be a good quarterback? I think he's going to be a good quarterback. He's disciplined now. He calls percentage plays. Gift, third, and less than a yard. The ball at the 48-yard line. Springs and Dorsett, the setbacks. problem for Dorsett. Oh, not all that big. He gets back on it. Dallas has a first down inside Washington territory at the 43-yard line. Monty Coleman made the hit on Dorsett. Let's see where he hit. This is just a third down short. Everybody's coming in. You see Springs trying to lead, come across on the other side. That was Rich Malott, the middle linebacker, kind of slid off. There it was right there. Almost, I believe, was knocked out of as much as anything else. You saw the they blocked in. by Billy Joe Dupree. He's a tremendous blocker. You also saw that was Jay Saldi in there. Jay too. Saldi, yeah. the other tight end. Short yardage offense for Dallas. Pays off. First down, 43-yard line of the Redskins. No score. 
Less than five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Drew Pearson in motion. Screen to the flank of Tony Hill. And he can run. They caught him in a good... Oh, that was... Down to the 25-yard line goes Tony Hill. First down, Dallas. Getting back to the storyline, Washington's got to test that Dallas secondary, and they've been lax in doing it, giving away the first two downs on each series they've had the ball. Here's an idea. You, you see uh, Drew Pearson on the inside. I, it could have been a defensive mix-up because when Drew went in, the coverage went in there with him and left Tony out there by themselves. It's an old play in the Dallas playbook. Looked like Tony was looking for his first down marker, and he got it. But they're doing exactly what they want, possession and control. That's Use right. the clock. Frank Keep their defense off the field. Dallas would like to do that. Springs gets the ball on the first down. Surges for a yard. A yard and a half. It'll be second down and eight. You know, we've been talking a lot about the nervous situation of Danny White. I'll guarantee you now that he's had the kickoff. He's, he's had a kickoff. He's had a try first down. He's punted. Now, none of that stuff's in his head. He's now sitting out there and said, hey, i got a job to do. He is experienced. He's been around for a while. So those first pregame jitters by now are gone. Danny White brings it up to the line of scrimmage. Tom Landry back to calling plays on the offense after working most of the preseason with the defense. Second and eight. Screen should be there. Springs. Oh, that's set up nicely. A beautiful screen. Springs will take it in and easily. Oh, flag is down at the five. I think they got a cowboy over there for clipping. It looks like it's Drew Pearson from here. So unnecessary at that point. He had him wiped out anyway. You're right, Frank. Touchdown's going to be called by. That was Dupree, I guess. Clipping against Dallas, and you will hear the roar of the Redskin fans. A beautifully set up screen pass. That one was really well. A little fake in the, in the line, drop back good, spring set to the outside. They had good blocks. You have to be impressed with the way White has handled this team downfield. Moving strictly, I'm sure, according to game plan with Tom calling the plays now that the season started. But personal foul, number 88 offense, unnecessary roughness, still second down. All right, the it is Drew for a veteran. Yeah. There's a little quick fake to Springs. You see that he sets back up, comes to the outside. Had a real good block there on the outside by Rafferty. Close him off. Springs does have that good, uh, more of a broken field runner than Newhouse. He's not as big nor quite as powerful. I'll tell you, that's a playbook screen. That is. The penalty moves them back to the 20. It'll be second down and six. That's got to be an audible. And there it is. And the outside lead has missed it. Hangs one up, and it's taken by Drew Pearson, but it'll be short of the first down, a gain of a couple, maybe three. Dave Butts was pressuring Danny White. And defensively, it was Lavender and Kenny Houston for Washington. Frank, it looked very suspicious to me. I think Danny White made an audible move, and I don't think Pearson got it to the outside. You see Danny look up. Ordinarily, that uh, he, uh, Danny must have thought, or anyway, they usually call those when they think a blitz is coming. And that's a down and end move. Pearson, I don't think, heard it. Went ahead and ran an out route. They were lucky to get that thing off and get anything at all. Danger is bad. Yeah. Pearson gets it to the 17. They need to get inside the 15 for the first down. It's third down. Two tight ends. Dupree, 89. Sally, 87. Dorsett. There you he go. has the first down. Dorsett to the 13-yard line. What a remarkably gifted athlete, Tony Dorsett. If he gets 1,000 yards this season, he will become the first player in the history of the NFL to record 1,000-yard seasons four consecutive, their first four consecutive years. The opening, well, few plays of the Houston game with the Bruce thigh. I don't think they mind. Yeah, I don't think they do either. Not playing. Yeah. They know what he can do. At the Redskins 13 yard line. We have no score. 233 remaining in the first quarter. Dorset again. They work the right side. Dorset works the left side. Dorset will pick yard and go. <laughs> Dorsett close to the five-yard line. At the six-yard line, Pete Wysocki made the stop. You talk about individual effort and skill. That was it. He did it on his own. Watch. Uh, ordinarily, of course, this is not going to work. But And there's very few backs that can make it work even once or twice. He happens to be one of them. Boy, but, is he fun. Yeah, he is fun. I love this sort of jazz. Now, you see that, oh, Thrill Hill's trying to get a block in there. Drew's trying to get a block. But <laughs> it's basically 
Tony. That was a pretty good tackle that missed number 24, Lamar Perry. That's right. Short of the first down. It'll be second down, long three. Ball inside the seven yard line. Pearson split to the right by Danny White. Dorsett again. Touchdown, Tony Dorsett. Man has a big hole over there. They have been going to the right side against Carl Lorch and Dave Butts behind the blocking of the big tight end Billy Joe Dupree and Jim Cooper. Well, they got Cooper and Rafferty on that side. They really are pleased with their offensive line, but that's an awfully big hole that's close down into the, the goal line. It's a big hole on the outside. I think you nailed it. It's good blocking. They're working that right side of the line pretty well. And as Howard mentioned earlier, Dallas doing what they want to do. They are hurting defensively. They would like to be able to run the ball tonight, keep their defense off the field if they can. They're looking at Raphael, Septien. At his finest year as a field goal kicker a year ago. Puts it through the uprights and the Dallas Cowboys have a 7 0 lead over the Washington Redskins. 2 15 remaining in the first quarter. And the mood of the crowd has quieted as the Cowboys take the lead. We'll be back in a moment. The offensive line of the Dallas Cowboys putting on a first quarter show. They are pushing the Redskins around the football field. Raphael, step the arm, step to catch. Deep for Washington. They like the ball to go to number 21, Mike Nelm. Step the arm will try to avoid Nelm. He will not. It will be the former Canadian Football League player from the goal line. Now up to the 50, still on his feet, and goes forward to the 17-yard line. And Dorsett put on quite a little show himself. They'll get Rafferty, 64, get a good inside move, but coming to the outside, that's a good, really good lead block on the other side by Herb Scott, the guard coming through. There's just nobody there. Big hole. Touchdown. Touchdown, Tony. There you go, right there. Touchdown, Tony. That block by Scott was a beauty. Mm. Scott came through. I didn't notice that when I saw it before, but he did come through. Saudi, Joe Saudi. The Redskins. I know they would like to exploit that packed up secondary of the Cowboys, and they immediately go to the end. The receiver, John McDaniel. And it's complete out over the 20. First down, Redskins. Out over the 25. Close to a first down. We'll protect ourselves. Now that's what they're going to have to do, Dandy. They're going to have to throw on the first and second downs of that series. The man in there is Steve Wilson defensively. He was a wide receiver and a return specialist a year ago. And he is forced into play because of the absence of Benny Barnes. We told you top of the show, Benny Barnes, a veteran cornerback, had an appendectomy this morning. There was a first down at the 27. Benny Hardiman, right side, piled up there as he gets a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Hageman in there defensively. And that first down pass play, Frank, there was an excellent block by the center, Bob Zeal, who came out and blocked Edie Lewis, an outside linebacker, blitzing that time, which is going to throw it man-to-man -man coverage on this side. There's two ways to try to protect a, a young secondary, and one is to go into kind of zone coverages and try to give them double help. The other one is to try to get a lot of help from that front four and send the linebacker over now there. The indication is Dallas is going to blitz. The brain trust, Tom Landry, and of course Danny White. Second down, called it a long eight. Ball inside the 28 yard line. To the air goes Tyson again on first down. Powering complete is to the big tight end, Bill Du Bois. Bill Du Bois pressed into action tonight because of an injury to number 85, the regular starting tight end, but there's a flag back at the 18 yard line. It is going to be a roughing the passer against Harvey Martin, it appears. Harvey was arguing a little bit with the referee. He must have hit him. Yep. The boys in there again tonight because of a slight fracture of the fibula to Don Warren, the regular tight end of the Redskins. Here's the call, referee Gene Bart. Well, this is Washington's first test of the year. Exactly as Dandy called. You see Harvey coming in. That's an awfully close call. Back in the old days when they didn't protect the quarterbacks quite as much, maybe uh, they would not have called that. I don't think they would have, but there is a new rule to try to protect that quarterback. And not a bad idea. Keep the field around a little longer. 41 yard line after the penalty. The Redskins on the Cowboys 41. Play action by Tyson. Going to McDaniel on the football. It was Dennis Thurman who is in there for a retired Cliff Harris. He's not big, but he has that neck 
for getting to the football. He is all over the field, and he has been consistently during the preseason. He's been playing great football. Well, there's a little play action back. Uh, he would look to be wide, fairly wide open, but you'll see Thurman right now coming over. That's a ball that should have been picked off. And that's his job. Back at that, they always relate that to the center fielder. He has covered a lot of ground in Thurman's. They tried him at the quarterback. He's much more comfortable with the free safety. Second down, 10. 41-yard line for the Cowboys. Harmon gets the call over the left side. Picks up three, three and a half yards down close to the 38-yard line. As the final seconds are expiring here in the first quarter. But what Washington must do is establish to themselves that they can answer back and quickly because of the way the offensive line of the Cowboys manhandle them during the first quarter and enable the Cowboys to play according to their game plan. Big play coming up for the Redskins. Third down and six in Dallas territory. They will not get it off. First quarter is over. A fast first quarter, and Dallas has a 7 to nothing lead. A Tony Dorsett touchdown. A Tony Dorsett and an offensive line showing by the Cowboys. I'll tell you, if that were reality, believe me, I can tell you who the winner of the debates would be. Grand <laughs> that <Dallas>. idea. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Third down, six. An important play for the Redskins. The ball at the 38-yard line, 37-yard line of the Cowboys. Heisman. He gets the first down. Very close to it. It will depend upon where they mark it. I believe he has it close to the 30. Larry Cole making the stop on Thysman. And this is what Joe Thysman gives you a little extra. He's a fine athlete. Dexter Clinks, Gale, the young rookie, missed him, uh, missed Thysman up about five yards before. But that was a good move by Joe with just coming back up under. He had pretty good pressure on that defensive line. Dexter Clinkstead. That's what I said, didn't it? It's a very good name. Yeah. Uh, right. South Carolina State. Dexter Clinkstead. Yeah. Free agent, by the way. Yeah, he got a couple of brothers. I think one of them's at uh, South Carolina State now. Was it too? That's a school for free agents. Witness Donnie Shell. His brother, Brent, is still. the quarterback at Duke. Really? Very athletic fan. I just thought I'd throw that out to you. I'm in the information business. Ball inside the 31. Redskins down by seven. They're just underway in the second quarter. Five, changing up at the line of scrimmage. And here they come. Look out, Joe. That's John Cody. And he dumps it off. D.D. Lewis pressuring Tyson on the blitz. And that's one way to compensate for lack of experience, such as the Cowboys have defensively in their secondary. You shoot your linebackers. And D.D. Lewis is a good one to bring in. First quarter statistics. Clearly, look at that ground game by Dallas. That's the key statistic. Total yards evolved from that. Dallas dominant throughout the first quarter. They've had 12 rushes and four passes. And they're making that thing work. Second down, 10. But Daniel and Brady's foot left. Dives into the air once again. To McDaniel. Complete. First down, he bottles the ball. Nope, they say he did not have possession. Incomplete. Aaron Mitchell, Dennis Thurman, defensively for the Cowboys. Yeah, Frank, then you know that really, truly, the ball was right there, and you know that Daniels is going to catch this thing nine times out of ten. So it's a good, I think you give a lot of credit. That ball was slightly tipped right there. Hey, there look at Aaron Mitchell come in to strip him, and there's Dennis Thurman. That's the, that's the thing right there. These two kids were out of position. They came in. It still calls it incompletion. Right. And the Mitchell. word on Mitchell is, and I'm sure you know, he is a physical that football that player. Point out third on the he, may, <laughs> he may not be the best in the world at one-on-one -on -one coverage, for example, but he's a hitter. He's got a garden on his mask at the moment. Third down, ten. Inside handoff. Buddy Hardiman. Buddy call to the 28-yard line. And that was a Mitchell again that came in there and almost hit late, but... That play was very slow in developing. Didn't get much out of the backfield. No quickness. Too slow. Those guys are going to recover. It's going to be interesting, I think, to watch Charlie Waters work that secondary. He's the defensive quarterback. Well, you secondary. have to see how much. And Frank made the point he's going to hit because he's been self-protected yeah. because of the injury. Mark Mosley comes on for the conversion attempt. 25 and 33 and 79. No field goals were made in the NFL. Straightaway kicker. Feisman is the holder. 
So you never know for sure they're going to kick. Off to the left. No good. And Dallas will take over. They'll have the ball. First and 10 of their own 28-yard line. So Jack Pardee disappointed in that drive of the Redskins. And it was a funny third down and 10 call. We'll be back in a moment. You. The only coach the Cowboys have ever had beginning his 21st season, Tom Landry. Yes. First and 10, Dallas, 28-yard line, their own 28. They lead 7-0. Drew Pearson goes to the right. It's a Ron Springs. That Spring turns the corner, taken out of bounds by Lavender, short of the first down. Is yeah. Tom claiming face mask yeah. there, I wonder? I wouldn't be a bit surprised. It looked very suspicious. You saw that little bounce-out move that Springs had. That's one of the main reasons why he's the starting fullback. You know, he just gets it done, Don. He's, uh, he's, nothing, he's not flashy like Dorsett. That's but what he just always comes up with it. I think that's what Tom was uh, base man. Yeah, he yep. played. Lavender kind of came around with that right arm. We couldn't see it too well, but he was right in front of Tom. Spring collected nine yards for second down and one. Ball out of the 37-yard line. Dorsett following Spring. Oh, upended. Close to the first down with Tony Dorsett. Hit there by Terry Brooks. Terry Brooks is a good one, I think. He is terrific. Yeah. Third year man, as I said, Southern University. Had never really worked hard. Decided to quit football. Left camp for two weeks. His wife had a baby. Came back. And started to work as he never had before. He's the key now, ahead of Coy Bacon, in Washington's ability to pass rush. Dorsett, that's the first down. It's a 38 yard line. Tony Hill now split to the right. Drew Pearson split to Danny White's left. Doors up. It's a block from Scott. All up. Short of the line of scrimmage. Rich Malad over there defensively from his middle linebacking spot for Washington. Quick reminder, Saturday coming up, NCAA college football action. It's going to be a beauty. University of Pittsburgh against Boston College. Now, Pittsburgh has a great defensive player in Hugh Green. They've got a young sophomore quarterback in Dan Marino. Pittsburgh, really a strong contender for the national championship. Other games are the regional action. Michigan State at Illinois, North Carolina, at Texas Tech, San Jose State, and Washington State. San Diego State at BYU. Florida a and at Miami of Florida. Check your listing for the game in your area. There was a loss of one by Dorsett. Second down and 11. Dorsett gets the ball. Down goes Dorsett. It was big day, but hustling across there to make the stop and hold Dorsett. Back at the original line of scrimmage, it'll be third and 10. On the prior play, Frank called number 68, Herb Scott. In the first quarter, Dallas was running effectively over the right side of their offensive line. But the left side is a powerhouse side. And now they're beginning to move up behind Pat Donovan, who's all pro, a great player, and Herb Scott is having a tremendous game. Third down nine. First time for the shotgun tonight for Dallas. Quite a lot of time. Oh. Man was open, and he threw it into the arms of Mark Murphy, the free safety of the Redskins. Flag is down oh. at midfield. Flag is down at midfield. There were two or three Dallas receivers open. But there were three or four. And it's going to be called against the Redskins, but after the interception. Let's take another look. I didn't see a great deal of pressure in here. See Fitzgerald up in the middle. They've got some time to throw. What you call a little bit of nervous speed in there. That was just a poorly thrown ball. Uh, I don't think anybody ran the wrong route. It didn't look like it to me. Just one of those balls that you kind of get back in there and you get a little nervous and throw it wrong. He's throwing the wrong people. And Scott and Donovan made the tackle on Murphy. Two men we just talked about. Call illegal use of hands against the Redskins. We did not pick up the offender, but the Redskins maintained possession at their own 43 yard line. Forte, French to the sidelines, out of bounds, about the 43-yard line, a gain of a yard and a half. 
So he's got Forte in, once a second round draft choice from Arkansas by the Pack. And Wilbur Jackson has come in. And that's the guy, I, I think that's the guy you're going to have to watch. He's in good physical shape. He's excited this Redskin team. He's quick, the former Alabaman, who's great coming out of the backfield for the pass reception. Last year, 53 receptions to the San Francisco 49ers. Coming off knee surgery a year ago, did not have a great rushing season. 375 yards last year with the 49ers. Second down and eight. The rookie from Syracuse. That was a knock up for the first down. Good throw that time. He got some pretty quick pressure. Joe set real well. There's the man that picked off that interception, Mark Murphy. Mark, you were in the right place, fell at the right time. Art Munk looks to be a good one. Keep your eye on that kid, Dandy. He is going to be a great, great football player. Art Munk, yes. Yeah. He's like Tony Hill. I think you mentioned Howard. He was a running back for two years at Syracuse. And then last year, broke all the Syracuse pass receiving records. Art Monk. Here comes the blitz. And Forte goes down in the arms of the middle linebacker, Bob Rooney. Who has improved enormously in yeah. the past year. In the meantime, you saw the quick glimpse of 50 D.D. Lewis as we look at Brunick out of Arizona State, six years. Lewis is one of, I think, six Cowboys at most, maybe five, over 30 years of age. He's been around forever, and he's always around the football. And what did we count off for the Redskins? There were 15 over 30, I believe. Mm -hmm. Second down, 13. The ball just over midfield. McDaniel splits to the left. Phil Dubois in the slot. The ball goes to Forte. Turns back and runs into Randy White and Bob Brunick. Uh -huh. Gain of a yard and a half. It'll be third and long. Third and call it 11. Good I don't play. get that call. Well, you were talking about it. I don't know whether it was on the air or during the commercial, but uh, I believe you were referring to Weeb Eubank and Emerson Boozer running the draw. Well, Weeb had a fetish, and he used it effectively, running the, uh, calling a draw with third and ten or more, but he had Emerson Boozer and Matt Snell. And he wasn't running against Randy White or Bob Rooney. That That's time. correct. <laughs> Those two guys covered it up pretty well. It kind of makes a difference. Yeah. The ball at the 48-yard line. Bison looking over the Dallas defense. Time to go to Hardeman. He was covered by Dexter Pinkscale, the rookie free agent from South Carolina State. Fourth down, the Redskins will punt. All right, quickly, an update on some baseball scores. The American League pennant race. The Birds of Baltimore are fighting back. They won the first game. They're leading the second game over tough Detroit. The Yankees scored four in the ninth, so they're ahead seven to four. Flag is down, and the ball goes out of bounds, very near the line of scrimmage. But again, a flag is down. I bet Mike Bragg's not too far away. He's probably watching this one. You know, Connell didn't kick at all last year. Penalty against the Redskins, and of course, declined by Dallas. Yeah, that's a toughie right there. You at least want to get them back down to their end of the field. Legal man downfield. Legal man downfield. Refused. Dallas right. has the football at the 43-yard line. They also have a 7 0 lead with 9.02 remaining here in the second half. Sellout crowd at RFK Stadium, 55,000 plus. And we'll be returning after this message. The 10. It's Mike Connell. At the ball go up the side of his foot. The punt good for five yards. Penalty against the Redskins, declined by Dallas. They have the football at the 43-yard line. He returns to the bottom of your screen. That's Tony Hill up at the top. Danny White on first down, puts it in the air. Tony Hill. Oh. Tony Hill has that first down at the 44-yard line. He had a great preseason. Well, uh, what's new? He had a great season last year. A great player. Frank, let's look at that. Well, this is I saw Tony, but what you can see, you see the linebackers going out. They faked a little screen to that side. Didn't get any help from the linebackers that time. He had Lavender push back because Tony Hill can run. Everybody knows that. Lavender single coverage too, Don. That's yeah. tough. Yeah. 
he was so far off him it was ridiculous but with Hill normally the action first begins when he catches the football that's his greatness ball at the 43 yard line of the Redskins inside handoff Dorsett and Dorsett runs into big toy Bacon a loss of a couple you know Bacon always fools you Don every year they write him off he's too old he had one of his greatest three seasons ever this year still Superb on the pass, rushing tonight, evidencing his ability against the run. 37 years old, 13 yeah. years in the pro. Started, yeah. started with the Cowboys. Yeah, Andy, Don, I've known him there. for a long time. Yeah, that's one of the few guys they're still playing I played with. <laughs> <laughs> there was a loss of three, so it'll be second down and 13. Tony Hill, stick to the right, Drew Pearson to the left. Danny White wants Tony Hill, he's open. Oh. A beautiful move, oh. he turned Lamar Parrish every which way but Lee really did the ball was thrown beautifully and when it goes Danny gotta feel better Joe you can do it too when you get Spice the ball face, face speaks volume they covered him again one on one they tried to bump him here but then he was stuck with Lamar Perry single coverage Frank you know this is a week you know they call it all sort of a corner route or whatever it is but the ball has to be thrown before he makes that turn and you can see that one was right on the money Tony had a good heel Perry Parrish hasn't even come into the picture yet, so it was a good good execution on both sides. You Tony do Hill. that to Lamar Parrish, that shows what kind of receiver you are, quite apart from the excellence of White throw, because Parrish, a veteran, is one of the better cornerbacks in the league. All pro. 37-yard pickup, the ball at the nine-yard line. It'll be first and goal. Another formation. He's out of the backfield, goes Pearson. Inside handoff, Spring. Spring met by Kenny Houston at the five-yard line. It'll be second and goal. You know what I like about Springs, Frank? He gets yards that you don't think of there. He picked that hole pretty well, didn't he? Go ahead, make a little move back to the end. To his right. Comment we made on Vegas Ferguson, the Notre Dame rookie with the pass. He was the leading rusher for the Cowboys in preseason. Swift, of course, from tailback a year ago where he played behind Dorsett, and he replaced Robert Newhouse as the starting fullback. John Springs, we're speaking of. Tony Dorsett gets the call. Oh. And he got yardage you don't think he can get also. Down close to the goal line, inside the two. Certainly did on that play. Ken Houston again, forced to make the stop. It'll be third and goal, inside the two. Well, again, you can see Big Herb Scott pulling, trying to lead in there. It's good close off on the right side of the line, but some of that certainly was made by Tony, who just pulled oh, the blocks. Did you see that block by yeah. Springs well, against Monty so. Coleman? Yeah. Three tight ends. Billy go to free, 89. Dave Sowley, 87. Doug Cosby, 84. We have a wealth of talent for tight end through the Dallas Cowboys. That's Saudi in motion. Danny White has a man open. And if not hit Cosby defensively, it was Mark Murphy for Washington. Well, they played that pretty well. That was Kenny Houston on the outside. He didn't go for anybody's fake. They were trying to have a little fake to the inside. Danny wanted to get outside pressure. You got to get outside your tackle to really make that play effective. You know? He'd have some threat of a run from the quarterback. If they'd ever got to the outside, Cosby had a hard time getting open. Credit to the Washington defense. Yes, sir. Dallas with the first and goal from the nine, and Washington holds at the two. Charlie Water will hold for Rafael Santiago on fourth down. 6 9 remaining in the first half. 19 yard attempt. A half a nine iron. It's good, and Dallas extends its lead to 10 to nothing. So, Washington with a good defensive effort. Stay in the ball game. We'll be back in a moment. We're in the nation's capital. You're looking at a helicopter shot. A little shaky up there. It's all right. It's pretty. It's Jefferson, Jefferson Memorial, Lombard. and it is a beautiful night for football. It was warm today. Raphael Septian will kick off for Dallas. This will be Ike Forte for the Redskins. The Forte. Close to the 25-yard line, make it the 26, piled up there. Wobbled the ball, and Gary Anderson came up with it. All right, now then, you're 10 points down. They need a big play, they really do. Dallas has been able to maintain possession. They've been moving the ball on the ground, working on the clock. Well, we 
you may see a change of momentum here because they made a big play when they held Dallas on Dallas's third down, containing them to a field goal. First and ten, the ball at the 25-yard line. Dallas has the football. Five minutes more. This ball is half in Washington. Oh, Wilbur Jackson is really hot. You can't call plays like that. Not at this stage, not even in the beginning. Against You don't run on Dallas. Bob Brunig filling the middle. Was it Brunig in there? Don't forget, a Thursday night special. This Thursday, just three days from now, Monday night football fever, second decade, and what a game we've got. The Rams come back to Tampa to go against the Buccaneers with their brilliant defense. The two teams met in the playoffs a year ago, a repeat. Gipper? Jackson, the single setback for Washington. Gets the call, right side, Ed Jones. He was playing better than he did when he left a year ago and set off on a boxing career. He's a better player than he was before he started in boxing because training as a fighter quickened his hands and for that matter quickened his leg. He may have left boxing at just the wrong time. He might have had a shot at Scott Ledoux. He also had good help from the outside that time with Mike Hegman who came in to close. Hegman is the has been around for a few years down there in Dallas, but has never really been the starter. He's replacing Thomas Henderson, and uh, they're expecting big things from Frank. Third down, a little more than nine yards to go. Five, and this time will go to the air on third and long. Fires out intended for Clarence Harmon. Defensively, it was Anthony Dickerson, another free agent rookie out of SMU that traveled around a little bit. They picked him up. He was out looking for work in Los Angeles. Hey, red, yay, blues. SMU, smooth, smooth. Ah, they do everything at Dallas. They really do. They're a great organization. They make defensive linemen, offensive linemen, and they make it work. This is Connell. His last punt was five yards. Certainly, he will look for improvement. Jones calls for and makes the fair catch and bobbles it at the 42-yard line. The rookie from Mississippi State. Dallas again with fine field position following a 34-yard punt by Mike Connell. We'll be returning to the nation's capital right after this message. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith, our first game of a new decade of NFL Monday Night Football. The Washington Redskins, the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas has a 10 to nothing lead with 421 remaining in the first half. They have good field position once again. The ball at their own 43-yard line. Billy Joe just please spit out. Top of your screen, you can just see his feet. He's the tight end. Dorsett gets the call. Inside handoff and gets out over the 45, close to the 46, hit by Coy Bacon, who's playing a fine defensive game for Washington tonight. He Dick really Dick. is. Dick. Brooks almost had Tony behind uh, the line of scrimmage. Yeah, but he, Tony he, slipped out. He did. It was... Uh, Fitzgerald's job to try to cut him off it's a very difficult thing to do defense defense you need some of it and the offense wouldn't hurt either about this state but but is so big in the middle he can control it pretty well he's been there for a long time Fitzgerald Springs is out Dorsett single setback two tight ends 89 Billy Joe Dupree Jay Saudi Saudi can play like a flank screen Dorsett Good defensive play. Dorsett, Dorsett still struggling in the arms of Rich Mallott. Mallott read that play beautifully. What he read was John Fitzgerald, who pulled out from his center spot and moved over there to set up a screen. Mallott was reading that center, and he went right along with it, and then had the speed and ability to cut in on the inside of Fitzgerald, get back to where Dorsett was. We well, saw this youngster last year. I think Howard mentioned it earlier. He broke his wrist in the seventh game, but he was really a surprise when he came up as a seventh-round draft pick. But I guess if he's a linebacker from Penn State, that's they not do it automatically. Ball for the court. Yankee rally. Four in the ninth. Salvage the game for them. They retain their four and a half game lead. They won it seven to four. John is 20th victory. Third down, 18. Inside hand off to Dorsett. Looks like a reverse. I think it is, and I think it's Look at him fly. Dorsett turns on the feed, gets the first down at the 45-yard line. Now, how many times are you going to pick up 15 yards on a reverse? Now, not very often. I'll guarantee you, this guy right here is one of the few who can pull it off. And he is putting on a show tonight. He's never played too well against the Washington Redskins in his three previous years. Here it is again. Drew Pearson almost gets the clip. You'll see it right there, but he didn't. Mm. 
And now it just opens up. You see Rafferty out there in front. What is the statistic on him? I think you guys might have read it. Every time he's gained 100 yards for Dallas, they won. He's done it 15 times, and they won all 15 games. So look at that discrepancy—a revealing graphic. The first down at the 45-yard line of the Redskins. What? Movement on the left side. It should be Pat Donovan over there. He says, "Wait a minute. What was that call? Now was it Hut one or Hut two? You've got to remember, Frank Washington has never lost a Monday night game at home. They're eight and zero. But they have the put on time thrillers. for everything. <laughs> well, it's also just two minutes and 44 seconds to go to halftime. Full start. You saw it. Cowboys move back five yards. It'll be second down, 15, ball resting right at midfield. And with a quick flash there to this carnival atmosphere again. <laughs> Lovely green on carnival atmosphere. That's what it is. Dorset adjusts back into the eye formation. Here comes Drew Pearson. Whoops, I don't think I'm going to go this way. I want to go back over here. It's a Ron Springs, and Ron Springs is really stacked up by Perry Brooks. Uh, I told you, this kid has become a player. Well, a lot of times when you see so much movement in Dallas' backfield, they expect the defense to respond to it. Sometimes they move too much, and the defense says, heck, I didn't have time to move. And that's kind of what happened that time. No, uh, Perry Brooks did, wasn't influenced by that at all. Where so Perry Brooks works, he can't even see it. Yeah, he said, was somebody moving back there? What was that? <laughs> Second down, 15. They may get this playoff before the two-minute warning. Yes, they will. Danny White stands in there. Ball deflected back in the arms of Danny White. That can only happen on Monday night football. Well, I think he read about Chester Markle yesterday. His attempted field goal was blocked. He picked yes. it up and ran it in for a score. The year of the unusual. Of what course. Is yeah. The bizarre. Actually, you know, when you're a new quarterback coming in trying to play stall back, you do everything you can to improve your statistics because that's the final line. Now watch Coy Bacon actually get an arm on him right there. Well, I got a question. Does he get a reception on this? He certainly does. I have caught one myself. Danny White is one of the better athletes on that club. He actually has been timed in a 4 5 5 40. That's pretty swift. He'll have to be pretty swift because when we come back, they will have the ball third down and 25 at their own 40. Yes. Danny White comes back from a conference with Tom Landry, who is wearing a headset, consulting with Danny Reeves, who's up in the press box. That ought to produce something on third down and 25. Andy White, of course, replacing Roger Staubach, whom we will speak with at halftime. He's watching the game in Dallas. It's not and while he's sitting there, I'd just like to thank him for some great years of football. Just watching him. He's special. Third and 24. Cowboys, 10 to nothing. One minute, 55 seconds remaining here in the first half. Out of the shotgun. complete short of the first down to Drew Pearson at the 43 yard line. Well, they didn't get their first but they did get them a little bit closer. We'll wait to see whether we have the punting unit or the field goal unit. We will see Danny White punting. Raphael Septian not the longest of kickers. Well, you know he's had a good preseason. Oh, yeah. really, uh, I think he's, he's done a lot of I'm talking about Raphael Septian. He's done an awful lot of offseason work. I think that his leg is a lot stronger than it was a year ago. I tell you, the kid who could still kick this, be within range for him, Franklin, with the bare foot at oh, Philadelphia. Yeah. They're going to run this down and take a five-yard penalty, and they're to use all the time they can. It's not going to affect the putt because Danny White will still be able to move the ball out of bounds if he wants to, or kick the ball high and still keep the Redskins in a hole. So they'll take the five-yard penalty for delay of game. The Eagles, that you mentioned Tony Franklin, they're the kind of the consensus pick for the NFC East, and they uh, delay of game, number 11 offense, still fourth down. They blame quarterbacks for everything. Yeah, you he's know? Got it. Now he's got yeah. an exception and a penalty. I know it. I just do it. The man you're really talking about is Dick Vermeil. Well, I was really talking about this. They the just did a good job. Browning, I call that man a wonder now. You're paraphrasing Browning? Yes, yeah, my last touch. I, oh, I see. Danny White will punt. You had a quick look at Mike Nelms, a dangerous return man for the Redskins. Look at that punt. Oh, that's pretty. He hung it 
So high. Wait a minute. That's Clifford. <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> that was kind Eric of... gets called for by Mike Nelms. He lets it go into the end zone. Aaron Mitchell was the man who was upset by Mike Nelms. <laughs> and it, well, it looked a little like Clifford. Mitchell was looking back for the ball. He says, I'm going to get it. And about that time, he got drilled by Nelms in the back. I'll tell Clifford, you, as high it? as he kicked that football, Danny White, there should have been All right. more, more Cowboys down there. Look at Aaron Mitchell, 34. I know it's up here somewhere. And Nelms <laughs> says, well, you're not going to get it. <laughs> ah, yes. You learn a lot after a few years in the NFL. One is to keep your eye on the other guy. We'll be back in a moment. Shot of Roger Staubach watching his former teammates perform here in Washington. Looks old, doesn't it? No, you look <laughs> terrific. Roger, what do you think? Uh, you're the 10 points out in front. Is it a surprise? Tell the truth. You notice my gray hair. <laughs> I, I think the uh, the line has done the job. The defensive line has controlled Theismann, and the offensive line has done a good job. Well, that's good, Roger. We'll come back to him at halftime. <laughs> First and 10, Washington. Inside one minute. 52 seconds to be back. This is Harmon. Uh -huh. Over the middle and up in it at the 27 yard line. It'll be a hurry up offense by the Redskins. Dexter Klinkscale, the rookie from South Carolina State, making the stop on Clarence Harmon. Rogers right about the defensive line, and you don't run against. Well, Joey Theismann wanted to get a playoff. He couldn't get his troops lined up. He calls timeout, moves over to visit with Jack Pardee. The Redskins have two timeouts remaining. That's our story from RFK Stadium in Washington. Dallas 10, Washington nothing. Field goal by Seption from in close. And Tony Dorsett also scoring from in close. And second and three. Complete for the first time to Clarence Harmon. The time is the key factor. And the Redskins will take another timeout. Theismann moving over to the sidelines once again. 38 seconds now indicating. His offensive line didn't know that. They were didn't know it last time. He ought to confer <laughs> with them a little bit. Yeah, they ought to talk to one another. Yeah, you got to get to know that offensive line. Sandy, well. I got a question for you. All right, what is it? Washington has had 13 carries. Yeah. Gained a total of 16 yards. 13 Their carries. Their longest run, a mere four yards on the night. Are you checking my mathematics? See if I can figure out how much they've averaged. All right, divide average. it out. Yeah. All right, 13 carries. It's just a little bit over a yard per carry. Now, how about that? In the face of that, yep. I wouldn't run a lot against these guys. No, I don't you think wouldn't. Yeah. There. I think I'd throw, little, I'd throw those little bit. See, I really think that what Joe is doing, he's coming in there, and maybe he's gotten locked in to certain things that he wanted to try to do in this game. They haven't worked. Oftentimes, you have to get a halftime, come back out, and say, we're going to do this a little bit better. He maybe should try to work on the outside a little bit with swing passes. Uh, he's not going to run against these guys. You know what he ought to do? Is get a little communication up here. Yeah, we got it all. Oh man, out, we got so many answers. Here. Not only that, we got store back tonight. Yeah, and we got questions too. We got questions and answers. First and ten, Redskins. The ball at the just short of the 39-yard line of the Redskins. 38 seconds. Down to one timeout are the Redskins. Out to the right goes Ricky Thompson. To the left is Art Monk. Dyson dealing the pressure on a three-man rush, but he fires and it's complete. That was a good throw. Guy Brown back there defensively against Clarence Harmon. This time you'll see the hurry offense. Theismann wants to, calling his troops together. Seconds ticking away. Now we have 20 seconds. Theismann. Oh! And there is a battle between Aaron Mitchell, number 34, and Buddy Hardeman. And we told you, Aaron Mitchell is physical. He is that. Filling in for an injured Aaron Kyle, who is on the injured reserve list. Time stopped, of course, with the incompletion. There's the end of the play. Well, number one, you see that, that Hardeman just had that ball. It bounced up off a shoulder pad. And you don't, you know, uh, right now, Mitchell was just a step behind him. But you don't give him anything. Don't give him anything. He'll catch up with you in a hurry. Interesting call now coming up by Thousand. He has one timeout. The Redskins, I know, would like to get Mark Mosley within some sort of reach of a field goal. Put something on that scoreboard. They're down 10 to nothing. Cowboys brought in their fourth defensive lineman. Oh. Incomplete over the middle. Stops the clock with seven seconds. It was Clarence Harmon. He was being defended against by Anthony Dickerson, the rookie free agent from SMU. Seven seconds. What do you do? Hang it up and hope for a penalty, I guess. Theismann complaining to the official that there was interference, but 
Well, you look for any kind of help you can get here. here. Back into the three-man rush now. The Cowboys have Harvey Martin, Randy White, and Larry Co and Ed Jones, rather. Cole having come out. Charlie Waters barking instructions to his young secondary. And they are young. Uh -huh. And there is Aaron Mitchell, second-year man. Dexter Clinkscale, 47. Eric Hurd, a rookie, is in there for San Jose State. Here it is. It'll be the last play. Providing this okay, quick call. Flag is down. It's complete for Muck, and Muck is inside the 35, and the flag is down back in the Redskins' backfield. It's going to be a holding call, and it's going to be against the Redskins. That Muck gave a little bit of the same thing Aaron Mitchell's been giving out right to Aaron Mitchell. He hit him pretty good. Time has expired in the first half. It was not a defensive penalty. Number 74 offense, half is over. George Stark was holding again. It was not a defensive penalty, so the half ends. Stick around with us. We'll be ready for halftime highlights after this message and then a word from our local stations. Danny White warming up at the sidelines. Not spectacular, certainly adequate. The real story was Dallas's ability to control the ball game, moving Dorsett and Springs on the ground. Set to kick off. Raphael Septian deep is Mike Nelms for the Redskins. But this will not be Nelms. It'll be Ike Forte. And Forte finds an opening and gets into midfield. Wow. Beautiful man. return by Ike Forte, and that could really spark the Redskins. Down to the 45-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. Absolutely. That was a burst up the middle, up the side there. Ike Forte ran right by Rafael Zeptian, who tried to make well, a tackle on him. Frank mentioned in the first half, as we look at it again, how Washington special teams are unfailingly excellent. They've got a lot of folks out there in front. Look at Raphael coming. He says, wait a minute. This is not supposed to happen to me. I think I'll try to hitch a ride. Oh, and face man. Almost got a face man. They did. They, they got did a call it. Absolutely. Marked off to the 40. Personal foul. Face mask. Number one on the run back. First down. At the 40-yard line. Good field position. Forte with a nifty return. He can do a lot of things on a football field, this Ike Forte. Osmond wants these fans. They have not had a lot to cheer about. He wants them to quiet down now. And the first down, Osmond over the middle. And it's Clarence Harmon. Harmon with a gain of about eight, getting close to the 34-yard line. Well, we had a collision back in the back, and you've got Osmond down and hurt his right hand more than likely hit on top of Harvey Martin's helmet. That's Harvey down, too. I don't think that lick on the head knocked him out. But wow. he had a pretty good collision. Right there, you saw an evidence of how Theismann has grown as a quarterback. He hung in there like Staubach used to. Stayed till the very last minute. It could have been that a hand got inside that face mask. That might be what it is, Frank, because it looks like Harvey's holding his eye. At least in his face. It's hard to tell. I think it was a good job of Theismann, uh, Howard. A lot of courage. Yeah. Harvey Martin is being administered to by the medical staff, the Dallas Cowboys. And we return to RFK Stadium. The Count Redskins will have the ball second and four. And now. Harvey Martin has been assisted from the field. We will attempt to get a report as quickly as possible. He's been replaced by Bruce Horton, number 77, second year man out of Illinois. Used primarily as a pass rushing defensive lineman a year ago for the Redskins. Second down and four. A handoff, Clarence Harmon. Harmon has the first down, plenty more. He gets down to the 15-yard line, and Ike Forte really set off a spark for the Redskins with that return of the kickoff. Frank Dennis Thurman made the stop defensively for Dallas against Harmon. Forgive me, Kemper. I don't know if we'll get a chance to see that again, but what a block by the rookie Art Monk to spring Harmon. Well, let's look and see if again. If they didn't waste much time in checking out Thornton on this side, he just replaced. You see, Thornton was cut down on that. I think the move was he bounced to the outside. Aaron Mitchell may have cut his pursuit angle a little bit too close to the inside, and Harmon was able to get outside of him. But Monk really leveled. He did. One That's guy who could have gotten him. You're Unfortunately, right. we couldn't get to him. You're right. 20-yard pickup by Clarence Harmon. The ball at the 15-yard line. The Redskins with a goose egg on the scoreboard. They'd like to erase that. Seisman goes down at the 24-yard line, hustling in there. Big Ed Jones. When Forte went off the field, you could see him with his left hand holding his upper chest. Quite apparently, I think, a rib injury. 
It appeared to be that checking that. And last play, uh, Weisman had really zeroed in on John McDaniel, and he was trying to work over on the other side. He had him what he thought was an inexperienced sort of fellow, Steve Wilson, and he was working with Wilson on the other side. Ron Saul comes out of left guard for the Redskins. He'll be a loss if he can't come back. Fred Dean, number 63, comes in. Timeout now called by Joey Feisman. He wants to talk things over with Jack Pardee. That was the first sack by the Cowboys of this game. Timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Second down, 20 for the Redskins. Mama, don't let your babies grow up to be Cowboys, unless you want them to have a lot of fun. Festive mood prevails. Second down and 18. Buddy Hardiman gets the call from Joe Feisman. Turns over the right side and nailed as he gets... About a yard, a yard and a half defensively. Ed Jones moving out, and Ed Jones is really playing fine football. He's not the one you expect to get the sack. And Tom Landry's defense, he is there to stop the run. And yet he got the only sack thus far of this ball game a few moments ago. Put Theismann back in deep yardage. They haven't been going his way much, Frank. The reason why we haven't said his name a lot tonight. Uh, they must have been watching some of those preseason films of him. He's had a Preseason. Third down, 17. Ball at the 22 yard line. Three wide receivers in now for the Redskins. Pressure again. Over the middle, Buddy Hardiman. And Hardiman short of the first down. Gets down to about the 11 yard line. Get there by Eric Hurt. Eric Hurt, the young rookie from San Jose State. But that's a good call. You know it, Don. You don't expect to get all that yardage on that play. Harvey Martin. <laughs> We've had a right. report banged into his own man, Larry Cole. Uh -huh. Cole. And that's what caused that bump from the forehead. You know, I don't know for sure. I know Harvey wears glasses. I don't know whether he wears contacts or not. But if he does, that might have been one of the things. Those contacts can sometimes cause you some problems. Joe Theismann will hold for Mark Mosley on fourth down. 29-yard field goal attempt, or apparently a field goal attempt. And it no good. This time off oh. to the right. So Mark Mosley has missed twice tonight. Unbelievable. He Mosley, was. normally one of the most consistent place kickers in football. I'll tell you, he was 15 out of 16 a year ago inside the 40. We were talking about too tall Jones again. Now it's a good set. Ball is turned real well. He knows right now that thing is off. But you don't know what was in his head before he got back there. One of them might have been too tall Jones. 11:31 remaining in the third quarter. The Cowboys maintain their 10 to nothing advantage. So Mark Mosley has missed from 29 yards out. The Cowboys have the football their own 20-yard line. They have a 10 to nothing lead. Uh, Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith were in the third quarter with 11:31 remaining. John Springs going to go set. And Dorsett gets the play. Oh, boy. And he just explodes down that sidelines. Lavender takes him out of bounds, but he's close to a first down. Maybe short by a half a yard. Good. You know, Frank. Uh oh, and Tony Dorsett is taking himself out of the game. He's had a very sore thigh muscle, but this looks as though it might be a hamstring problem. We'll find out as quickly as we can. We'll have a report for you. I don't know that we can see it, but let's see what did. They left him wide open out there. See anything that maybe just a muscle sprain or something like that. Second down, less than a yard. This is James Jones, who has come in for Dorset. He's a rookie. We've seen him on the special teams. He's from Mississippi State. In preseason, he gained 74 yards, impressed Tom Landry. Beat out Larry Princeton for the job behind Dorset. Ever been to Mississippi State in Starkville, Frank? No, I haven't. I spent a long time. No, I, I think I passed through there one time, but I didn't stay. I went there. You did? What'd you do down there? Off the candidate school, World War II. Yeah. Jones protect the grateful nation. Jones stays in. Dorsett, you saw on the bench. Drew Pearson doubles back on the first and ten. This is Jones. Jones! And Jones finds a little opening, gets out. Over the 35 to the 37, a gain of seven. It'll be second down at three. Carl Lorch and Monty Coleman made the stop. When 
Dorset gains 100 yards or more. The Cowboys are 15 and 0. I, I, that's a that's a pretty graphic. I actually thought it was 15 and 1. I thought there's one time that he did it that uh, they didn't, but I wouldn't ever argue with our. It graphics could happen so far. against Pittsburgh. Well, he has 68 yards thus far on the night. Meanwhile, on the field, second down, a long three. Ooh, and a mix up in the backfield, but this is Billy Joe Dupree. And he just pulls his way to a first down, and he won't go down. <laughs> Up to the 45-yard line, Billy Joe Dupree doing it on his own, finally taken by Pete Wysocki. He is a great tight end. That was a and in the mold of the great big tight ends these days. Let's but, look at the end Where is you here, Danny? Play. Look at that uh, mix-up in the backfield by Jones. They have a rookie in there, Jones, 23, a yeah. second-year man in Springs. It's one of the things that quarterbacks always are very cautious of when you have rookie running backs in the backfield. When you turn around, you're going to take a quick look and make sure they know where they're going. They'll realign your profile. The first and ten is at the 45-yard line. Springs oh. gets the call and up from the Kenny safety Houston. spot, Kenny Houston. He reads the plays so well. Point is, Frank, we talk so much about Russ Francis and Dave Casper, people like them. Dupre certainly ranks right up there with them. He does the job that Landry likes the tight end to do in the offense. You know, he Ooh. does. Tremendous blocker. We've also got Jay Saldy and Doug Cosby, who are three. I don't think anybody's got three better tight ends than no. no. Nobody has that kind really of depth. Second down and ten. That's the position. White gets out of the sack of Troy Bacon. And gets it to Drew Pearson here, bobbles the ball, it's incomplete. Drew Pearson has not caught a pass tonight. Now, Roger, you're sitting there, and you've got to feel good about White on that. Apparently, Sacks spinning out of it, keeping his perception downfield and hitting Drew Pearson, who should have caught it. As I said, he's only caught two passes tonight. Wasn't that what I said? He really was. Roger's one of the guys that first told me what a great athlete Danny White is, because I didn't really know much about Danny, but... He says, man, you don't know what, what I've been working with all these years. He said, I've got a guy who's right behind me who can really play. And that's hey, it comes good back naturally. His father was a great All-American out of Arizona State. Wizard White played with the Bears later on. Meanwhile, out of the shotgun, Danny White looks over a third down and 10. The ball just inside his own 45-yard line. Deflected him as intended for Butch Johnson. Tony Peters knocked it away. That'll bring up fourth down, and Danny White will stay on with the punting unit for Dallas. To show you how Dallas has adhered basically to game plan is their play selection on the night. 26 rushes, 14 passes. Finals in the National League. Well, put them away very quickly. Mike Nelms will get those right. deep for Washington. Danny White will punt. Here's Nelms. He led the CFL in punting last year. He was in Ottawa. Good kick. He'll let it bound into the end zone. And Washington will take the ball on the 20 following the touchback. And you understand now why Danny White is the punter for Dallas as well as the quarterback. That one good for 56 yards. We'll be right back. I'm updating the American League pennant race in the East American League. Baltimore on its way to winning a doubleheader. The Yankees rally to win 7-4 with four in the ninth. If Baltimore wins the second, they'll trail by four. Washington up over the ball. First and 10, the ball at the 20-yard line. They remain scoreless. Dallas leads by 10. Always on first down. And he goes out to John McDaniel. Great. First down, Washington. Frank, remember the first time McDaniel had been with Cincinnati? It had been but rarely played. We had that game against the Rams, and McDaniel went crazy. As I think it was Oakland. Uh, upset it? the Rams. What? Was it Oakland? They had nine receptions that night for us. So it was really a wild performance. I thought it was against the Rams. Could well be. That's one of those. Back on better on a few things. That's one of those West Coast teams. <laughs> Handoff with Buddy Hardiman over the right side. It's a couple of difficult yards. It'll be second down and eight. Pretty good group that stopped it. That's Brunig, Waters, Too Tall, and Heckman on the outside. All four of them came in there. He's not going to go too far. 
Washington, and they penetrated to the Dallas Cowboys 12 yard line in their opening drive following a tremendous return of a Dallas kickoff to begin the second half. They were sacked and Mark Mosley uncharacteristically missed the 29 yard field goal. Second down and 10. Mark Muck, the rookie number one draft pick, bottom of your screen. Play action by Thousand. Good tackle. Good tackle. Lewis. Terrific tackle Mr. by D.J. Mr. Consistency, they call oh, him. Boy. He always does it right and shaking up his Clarence Harmon for the Redskins. He came in there with the outside, had one shot at him, took it, got him right around the ankles, and he went down. You know, D.D. Lewis and uh, Larry Cole were the only two guys left off of that team. That's Harmon that's down. Harmon is best as an alternate backup to John Riggins, who clearly the Redskins missed desperately tonight. So we'll be back in a moment. Clarence Harmon is still being assisted out on the field. He was shaken up the tackle by D.D. Lewis. Just to remind you, Thursday night, of course, we'll be bringing you a special Thursday night telecast from Tampa Bay. The Rams in Tampa Bay, but preceding that, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock Eastern Time will be Monday Night Football Fever, a decade of the NFL. We taped that over the past week and looked at some of those tape clips, and you forget so many of the humorous things, so many of the entertaining things that have happened over the past 10 years. So take a look. It was fun. Remember the guy on the tightrope in Buffalo? Never forget him. Remember the fan in the Astrodome in Houston? Harmon is up. Apparently just the wind knocked from him. He was upended by D.D. Lewis on a shoestring tackle. He appears to be fine. He picked up three yards. Will be third down and seven. Ball at the 34-yard line. 7.03 remaining in the third quarter. The Cowboys on top 10 to nothing. Robert Jackson, number 40, has replaced Harmon. Buddy Harm Hardiman, number 22, stays on. Good throw. Out of a crowd, and the ball should have been caught. It was not. Yeah, Daniel but did not hold on. But it was Aaron Mitchell who hit him, and all night long we've emphasized the way Mitchell hits. That's, he does get hit, but what we don't see on this particular replay is that Theismann uh, did stay in there in that pocket and throw the ball. He hits him right in the numbers. Blap! Now, you got to hold on to those oh. things, but you do have Mitchell around the ball, and something's oh. going to happen. On fourth down, Mike Connell, who has had a rough night punting for the Redskins, is back in. Jones is deep for Dallas. This time, Connell turns it over. It's high. And Jones will take it without the fair catch. And he gets back out over the 35 to the 36. A risky proposition at that point. I was thinking when I saw Jones receive the opening kickoff, here's a rookie coming in with the Dallas Cowboys, and they're gonna, Redskins are going to kick off to him. He's back there. I said, man, if you're going to ever fumble, that was justified. He's handled the ball several times tonight. Did fumble one a little bit, but recovered. I started to tell you a moment ago, Tony Dorsett was on the sidelines. The report was that he had leg cramps. He's back in the game. He has 68 yards thus far on the night. And he can reverse that very quickly. Dallas at their own 36. Pearson in motion. Dorsett has the move to the outside, and Monty Coleman, whom we talked about extensively in the first half, with that great speed was there. You watch this kid throughout this season. He's going to come into total stardom. What he is is an athlete of the Tom Hollywood Henderson ilk and maybe even better, and that's saying something because regardless of Henderson's shenanigans, he's one of the best athletes, Dorsett. an all-around athlete who ever came to the Cowboys. Dorsett going back out of the game again. Jones. 23 comes in. No, he goes back out. So we have three receivers in. Butch Johnson, the other wide receiver, number 86. This is Ron Springs. And Springs goes down. It's Carl Lawrence. Oh, yeah. He got on the inside. Moved in there and got it. We're going to quickly pause five seconds, however quickly you can pause for five seconds, for our local stations to identify themselves. <laughs> Stadium overflowing tonight 
the fans and Washington Redskins anticipating this game all year long. They don't like Dallas here in Washington. Dallas controlled the ball in the first half. Gorsett moved in from six yards out to initiate the scoring. And then Raphael set the arm. Had a three from in close. Washington unable to move the ball on the ground, having a difficult time against the weak Dallas secondary. Danny White, third down, 15. Intercepted. Monty Coleman. There's your Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman again. Monty Coleman turns it over, and the Redskins have the football at Dallas' 25 yard line. And that's what the Redskins have done so many times over the years. They lead the NFL, they have led it for the last two years in what they call give away, take away. This is one of them. And well, uh, it was thrown behind the receiver. Monty Coleman did make a good move to intercept it, but the ball, once again, was thrown behind it. We'll see again. This is a third down in a long situation. It's a tough place to be in. The ball had a little wobble to it. He was trying to get it to... Uh, I think it was Thrill Hill, but Monty Coleman was the guy that stepped in there and picked it off. He runs like a halfback. First and ten. Clarence Harmon back in the lineup, so we know he's all right. On first down, Theisman again. Almost. Charlie Waters. Charlie Waters picked off. Charlie Waters one-hands it. Well, I think that ties him with Cornell Green. Charlie Waters. Makes a big play near yeah, the yeah, goal line, picking off a pass that could have been six had it got to John McDaniels. He was behind the defense. It certainly looked it, but what he showed, what the years have done for him. What do you think about Charlie Howard Frank is that he really is the quarterback back there. Had good pressure from Brunig. The ball was laid up a little bit. You see a one hand interception, but there's no question that uh, McDaniels had his man beat. Water was right there, filled up that center field thing. He says, I picked it off. Charlie's had his knee operations we've talked about, and I think he would be the first to admit. He says, wait a minute, I've got to find out if I can really play on this knee, and then he can. Well, the defending NFC Eastern champion Cowboys turn it over again. Back-to-back -back interceptions. Danny White. Jennifer Drew Pearson well over the arms of Drew Pearson. Let's take a look at Charlie. There he is. He's happy and justifiably so. Football is like every other sport. It's a game of mistakes, missed opportunities. Washington typifies that tonight. Two missed field goals that Mark Mosley would normally make. 145 yards out, 129 out. And the failure to capitalize on that last interception by Coleman. Failure created by Waters' great intercept. Second down and 10. Tony Hill slipped to the right by Danny White. The toss goes to the rookie, Jones. And James Jones out to the 25-yard line for a gain of five. It'll be third down and five. Again, a reminder, college football coming your way this Saturday. It'll be Pittsburgh against Boston College. Many think that the Pittsburgh Panthers can move to a national championship. In other games, Michigan State at Illinois, North Carolina at Texas Tech, San Jose State at Washington State, San Diego State at BYU, Florida A&M at Miami of Florida. Check your local listings for the time and the game you'll see in your area. NCAA College Football. Third down and five, 3.56, and the clock is moving here in the third quarter. Dallas on top, 10 to nothing. Springs is in motion, White out of the shotgun. White throws the ball behind Springs. Incomplete will be fourth down. Danny White is not throwing the ball well tonight. A little tentative, which I assume could be expected, but he just came off of a rather disastrous three interceptions at Pittsburgh. In talking with Danny prior to this game, he says, you know, I'm not really making excuses, but as possibly you know, a lot of those were on blitzes and my receivers didn't pick up the right coverage. Tonight, he has thrown a couple of interceptions that I think basically are his. You had a quick look at Mike Nelms for the Redskins. At his own 21, this is Danny White. Beautiful punt. Takes Nelms back to his 17. Nelms trying to pick up the picket line. He's got a little bit of it. And dances out close to the 25-yard line. It's a good-looking ball player. 
Yes. Went to Bella, had three years up in Canada with Ottawa, and now down here. It's cut by Buffalo back in 77, as a matter of fact. Bobby Bethel. I'm surprised we haven't really seen Ricky Klatt, the free agent from Bethune-Cookman. Wait a minute, we are bringing this back. I don't see a flag on the field, but they are bringing the ball back. I don't see it either, but I see the Dallas. And uh, Washington wants Dallas to punt over, so obviously the penalty is against Dallas. Legal man downfield. Ineligible, number 86 downfield on the That's kick. Re-kick, fourth down. Rich Johnson. Skid Platt from Bethune Cutman, your favorite school. Yes, Bethune Cutman, you're right. Detroit trying to fight back in that second game. 8-4 now, sixth inning. They've gone six. Well, Danny White, who had a booming punt a few moments ago. Now will station himself close to his 15-yard line. Now has moved up to about his 28-yard line. <laughs> and the ball goes out of bounds. They did a lot better. Out of the 37-yard line. Picked up a few yards, yeah. About 12, 12 yards. The Redskins need to get something happening. They had a great opportunity at the very beginning of the second half. They got to the 12-yard line, couldn't get it in, and mostly couldn't hit from 29 yards out, so they remain scoreless. We just looked at Tom Landry facing the sidelines. Up to this moment, he's going to be pretty happy facing a year of challenge this year. First and 10, Washington, their own 37-yard line. Thighs it again on first down. This is Ricky Thompson, and he comes up with the football, and they say incomplete. Well, I think they got it. They just killed the cock. I think they're going to give him that, aren't they, Frank? And he made a good are. move. Yeah, Aaron Rick. Mitchell was right with him, but Aaron Mitchell was playing him rather than the ball. How many times have you seen the ball slightly underthrown and the receiver adjust to it quicker than the defensive back? He certainly has an advantage. He's looking back on his shoulder, running one way. But Ricky made a good move. It is a completion. First down. Oh, just short of the 45-yard line of the Cowboys. Lawrence Harmon. Again, doing business on the left side. Gain of about five to the 40-yard line. Bob Bruning over there to make the stop. And we're going to tell you this telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, whether use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. I remember that used to be my job. <laughs> I'll give it to you next time around. All right, thank you. Disclaimers. I like those disclaimers. I like to do that. They mark it inside the 40, so it'll be second down and four. Cuts back inside Charlie Waters, gets the first down inside the 35. They did a good job that time kicking Charlie Waters out, holding too tall in. Having missed three earlier opportunities, now they're down scoring position, engineering a decent drive. From their point of view, the Redskins must not blow this opportunity. And they're still only 10 points back. That's, That's right. Plenty of, of time left. That's the whole point. No need to rush. And after you've watched these two teams for so many years, you just are sitting here waiting for the fireworks to explode. It's almost as if you know it's going to happen. First down. Rise into the air once again. That's Harvey Martin back in there. Firing into the end zone. Intended for Thompson. And there is a battle for the football. It's incomplete. Almost picked off and almost completed. Ricky Thompson gave him good battle down there. And Steve Wilson, number 45, who was covering it. All right, here's Ricky Thompson. You see Steve Wilson right there. He doesn't want to interfere with him. Again, a ball is slightly underthrown. Wilson's coming back to fend for it. There's a little pushing and shoving in there. That's all fair. Well, he made a good defensive play. He was playing the ball. Yep. And he was right there with his man. And you know, consider he was a wide receiver a year ago, running back punts and kickoffs. Benny Barnes, of course, went down out of the lineup with an appendectomy this morning. So Wilson in there at cornerback. Second down and ten. Flag 
is down as Feisman. Fires complete to Buddy Hardiman. And holding. And it's going to work against Washington. There they go again. Nailing to capitalize. They give us a chance to talk a little bit about the left side of that Cowboys defense. Ed Jones, of course, is back, but remember a year ago when they gave up a number one and two draft pick? Yeah, John yeah. Dutton, who's not in the starting lineup. He seems 73 offense, holding, still second down. Jeff Williams holding, probably against Larry Cole, who is in there where John Dutton is expected to take over someday. He is sitting scan action. Dutton is. Now you can see that is Larry Cole, 63, trying to move out. There's a left arm wrapped around him a little bit too much. They look like they're doing a little uh, shuffle to the right and a shuffle to the left. A one-two, one-two. Second down and 20 is Clarence Harmon with a big opening. Yeah. Gets back to the inside and gets about seven down at the 37-yard line. It'll be third down and 13. Harvey Martin's primarily an outside rusher. He went to the outside that time. They kicked him out with on the inside. That's a good call. You can't get that kind of yardage back in one throw. The ball that was almost picked off, I thought, was an ill-advised call. This had the element of surprise to the rush, and it was probably their longest game of the night on the run or close to it. Now they had a 20-yarder a while ago, but you're right. It's not a bad call because they're way back there. Second and a whole bunch. They still got third and about 12, 14. the 38-yard line. He'll have some time as he picks up blockers. Look at Tutal covering that ground. Feisman fires to Art Monk. Monk struggles to get yardage for the first down, coming up short at the 27. Charlie Waters makes the stop on Art Monk. For the 30 seconds the play took, I thought I was watching Sir Francis. <laughs> Sir Francis. Well, Sir Howard, he was not there. That was Joe Feisman. Yeah, I was reading a thing. You got Tony. Well, that thing just keep clicking down. What are they doing there? Field goal unit is on the field. Seven. And they will not get the field goal attempt off before the third quarter expires. And there it is. We're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports. That's the end of the third quarter. With the score, Dallas 10, Washington nothing. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in just a moment. We begin the fourth quarter. The Redskins have the football. It's fourth down and four at the 28-yard line. Mosley is on for another field goal attempt. He has missed from the 45 and the 29. This will be an attempt of 45 yards. And looking good. The Redskins are on the scoreboard. They trail by seven. Mark Mosley, and I'll bet the butterflies were churning in his stomach after missing that short one. At the beginning of the third quarter, Mark Mosley missed from 29 yards out. Yeah, that's got to make it feel a little bit better. You know, if he had kicked those other two, we'd have had ourselves a heck of a ball game. We're still right in the middle of it, only seven. Oh, a bad game, that yeah. back in it. Now, there are the third quarter statistics. First downs have become even. The yards rushing is still predominantly Dallas. Yards passing, Feisman dominant there. Total yardage almost even. Time of possession now almost even. And that's the key. What Dallas has to do now is go back to where they were in the first quarter and in the first half. Maintaining possession and using the clock. Hardman has a foot problem now being checked. Here is Mosley set to kick off. Dallas drops the rookie, James Jones, from Mississippi State. Back to about his two-yard line. Mosley doesn't kick the ball all that deep. He just kicks it very high. to his 10-yard line. Oh, got some running room. James Jones takes it out over the 40-yard line for Dallas. Ricky Clapp picks him out of bounds there, but Dallas has good field position once again. What a big play that was for Dallas. Quickly now in good field position, they can reestablish the very possession and control game they want. 
Now in Major League Baseball in the National League. Bills beat the Bucks, who are faltering terribly. Bills now lead the Bucks by two. Cincinnati over Atlanta. Atlanta's been one of the hottest teams in baseball. Chicago six over St. Louis is two. 32 yard return by Jones. Danny White looks it over. The ball inside his 42 yard line. White looking to screen. Gets it to Springs. It's set up beautifully. Boy, it looked like to me he had a couple of linemen downfield. Springs almost turned back and lost the first down. There were no flags did. down. Lamar Parrish made the stop. The ball at the 47-yard line of the Redskins. It's a rather slow developing screen. It looked to me that Fitzgerald and maybe Scott had gotten downfield, but evidently they hadn't. No. Nope. Here we take another quick look. A little low angle shot of this thing. You can see Denny kind of setting up. He had a flare out to his right, but Springs over here to his left. And now you're going to see those offensive linemen picking up some blocks. That's the move that Frank was referring to. He almost lost his first down, but he didn't. First and 10, 47 yard line of the Redskins. Ron Springs spins away from one red scale, but is piled up at the line of scrimmage. Defensively, Isaki was there, along with Coleman. Harry Brooks, number 69. Tell you, that kid Coleman has given us some game, Frank. Oh, he is something. And yeah, nobody going home now. It's still a full house. 10-3. We've got ourselves. Almost a full quarter to play. I'll tell you, he didn't start tonight. Coleman didn't start, but Brad Dusick is not a bad linebacker himself. It's going to be a tough decision as to who the linebackers for the Redskins are going to be this season. Second down and ten. Jones. And Jones to the 40-yard line. Eight of seven. It'll be third and three up in it by Wysocki. He's quick. That Jones came in there. You wonder if yeah, that Larry Brinson, that Scott Laidlaw, that were veterans and they uh, did not make the team. Now Jones comes in. Newsom comes in. Rookies. A couple of rookie running backs. They like him for a couple of reasons. Jones, I'm speaking of. They brought him in really as a kick return man. He returned kick for Mississippi State, as a matter of fact, a year ago. He returned one for a touchdown against Maryland at 92 yards, and you saw a moment ago, he gave Dallas good field position on the kickoff. Danny White looking over third and three. This is Ron Springs, inside handoff, and on his own, getting the first round down close to the 35. That's a, a real legs. compliment. Huh. That's oh. a compliment to your offensive line. You're sitting there on a long third and three, maybe if anything, three and a half, and you say, look, I'm not going to the air. I'm going to come back in. We're going to try to do a little inside trap. Ron Springs, get me three and a half yards. Yeah, but that guy pumps those legs. Yeah, he, he does. Drives. Yeah, he does. But, you know, I, I think really in the Dallas, the Dallas's philosophy, you get in that three and a half, four yard zone, it doesn't really pay off that much. Third down yardage, that's, a, I think, a compliment to the offensive line. First and 10, 35 yard line. Second's ticking away here in the fourth quarter. Redskins down by seven. Two person in motion. Inside handoff, Springs again, breaks the tackle and breaks another one and look at him inside the 30. That was Kenny Houston that came in from his safety that position. You break Kenny Houston, you're breaking one of the best. I'll tell you right now that you get five yards that way when not a single yard was really there. That's a great run, even though it only gained five yards. Well, Washington plays a lot of defensive coverages and, and some of the you know, how, what, why Kenny made a tackle earlier in the game two yards behind the line of scrimmage and he, he's a safety man. But they do, they key on different offensive players over there. That time he keyed, came into the backfield, and missed the tackle. Second down and four. Jones back into the eye and puts the handoff, turns over the right side and short of the first down, down to about the 27. It'll be third down and two. Marty Coleman. Coleman and again in on the stop, along with Coy Bacon. Three young linebackers, a lot. The youngster from Maryland, and there they are. Olkowitz, lot and Coleman. Three brilliant pickups for the Redskins, and that's why Frank said, as good as Dusek is, and why Saki, the veteran, will be seeing more and more of those kids. Two free agents on an 11th round draft pick. All right, here we go, right here, good one. As they say, has used four minutes on this drive. They have a third and two. Springs. 
Oh, uh, yeah. He is a beauty. They have a first down inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. Perry Brooks sliding out there to make the stop. But this takes the heart out of the defense. And particularly a moment ago when they had a long three yards, they did not go to the air. They gave the ball to Springs. And behind that surging offensive line, they got the first down. That takes a lot out of the defensive unit. And it can take Washington pretty much out of the game, though there's still a lot of time left, 9.40, because Dallas already in good field goal position. Springs will get a breather. He was shaken up a little bit. Robert Newhouse comes into the game. Springs leads with 44 tough yards on the night. And Newhouse is no slouch at all. He's been here nine years. Very consistent ball carry. There That's the goes. call immediately. And Newhouse revolves down to the 12-yard line. Ramani Coleman takes him there. Cowboys call those kind of plays an influence play. You see a little crossing action in the backfield. They'll have an influence up in that offensive line. And it's something to be said for those fresh legs that they just brought in there. Exactly. Newhouse. Gain of six, second down and four. Newhouse is a very functional player. I've heard you speak of him before, and functional is certainly one of the words that you've used to describe him. And I would agree he's at least functional. Got sticky fingers. He's only fumbled the ball seven times at 560 carries. You gotta like that. Newhouse again. I think he got him the first down, or he got it very close at the ten. Very close. Yeah. Maybe not quite. And the big thing is the seconds continue to tick away. Dallas using the clock, and I'm sure they came in with that strategy. If we can move it on the ground, we can keep that. Washington offense away from a defense that is really hurting, at least in the secondary, although they have not shown it tonight. You see Newhouse go out, and it's an old cliche in football, but he really is a genuine team player. He says, I've been here nine years, and I'm going to do everything I can to help the team. Springs, of course, back in. Three tight ends. Dupre, Saldi, Cosby. Jones gets the call. He has the first down. Oh, that was a beauty, too. Ben's got some moves, hasn't he? Really fought for that. Hey, Tom Landry has got to be pleased with what he's seen tonight from his youngsters. He's got nine rookies on this football team. All of them have been in action night. Yep, there he is. He's got his save the hostage button on, which is, that's Tom. He's also a new grandpappy. Got him a new a grandbaby boy, I believe. He's got a very sore knee from jogging. Yeah. <laughs> and he just told Tony Hill what he wanted. Second and goal, first and goal, the ball at the nine yard line. Tony Hill, 80, Drew Pearson, 88, both placed to the left. Jones, right side, and they continue to they're going right, aren't they? Hay over the right side. Little going guy right, slithers through. Inside the five. Now Cooper, Big Jim Cooper's the guy, he's the newest addition, really, on a regular basis, and they've had. Several folks, Andre Frederick is in there. He's a good backup. They also got a good rookie, and it's Kurt Peterson. If we haven't seen much out tonight, another one of those guys. There's Jones. That Jones is looking That's good. That's the kid who set up the whole drive with his brilliant kickoff return. Cowboys have used over eight minutes on this drive. They bring the short yardage offense in. Out goes Pearson and Hill. That means the three tight ends are in. That's Sally. Springs. Right there. Very good play. One you don't see a lot. They bring is that Saldi from the game in. He, he's like a lead blocker. You bring Saldi in on that little play. All right. And then behind the goal, I'll take another look at it. It's Jay Saldi comes through, but Jay comes from a little wing position. Number 87, you see him lead Springs right through. Comes on the inside. That was Pat Dobbin, number 67. That was kind of getting in some of the way the folks. And then he's going to just fall over there. Touchdown. Very impressive performance by these young people. Dallas beautifully coached, as all Landry teams are. Raphael set you on for the conversion. And Dallas stretches their lead over the Washington Redskins. More importantly, they took over eight minutes off the clock. We'll be back at RFK Stadium in a moment. What I like best about that. Rabiel Septian will tee it up at the 35-yard line. Deep for Washington, Mike Nelms. If you're wondering about Tony Dorsett, we checked for you. He still has a problem with leg cramps. Septian. 
takes it to the three yard line. This will be Mike Nelms. And Nelms hustles out over the 20. And Washington now will take the field. They're down. 17 to 3. More of your carnival atmosphere. Back, yeah, back to the carnival. Not bad. Springs responsible for much of the yardage on that drive that took up over eight minutes. They mark it at the 22 yard line. Theisman has consistently gone with the pass on first down. You see nothing, no reason for him to change that. Theisman tried to knock it away, didn't have to, it's incomplete. That was a good move by Theisman because it, it really could have intercepted. He says, I'm not going to do a Danny White catch bowl pass, but I'm going to knock him away. I didn't see who hit it. Let's see if we can see it again here. You've got, that's too tall, I should have guessed. That's too tall, knocked way over there. Those oftentimes do get picked up. You see Theisman come <laughs> across the other side. You know, uh, we had a little bit of publicity on uh, when Tony uh, Dorsett changed his name from Dorset to Dorsett. This guy hasn't always been Joe Theismann. He was Joe Theismann down in uh, Notre Dame until this says we're going Theismann for the Heisman in trivia. Uh, Looking down at 10, screen to the flanker is Thompson. And down goes Thompson. Charlie Waters is there, but the main man was Hegman. It'll be third down and 10. Those guys saying, now, wait a minute, fellas. Coy Bacon said, now, wait a minute. I'm getting back there so fast, I have to tell the quarterback where to set up. But reflectively, you've got to respect what Landry has done with this team because his team has shown the capacity to play the way it wanted to play and had to play and when it had to do it. That last drive, a thing of beauty, like Lombardi's teams in 61 and 62. Third and 10. Struggling forward, close to the first down. Out near the 33-yard line. Steve Wilson defensively there for Dallas. It is a first down. And they didn't do it against a team of chunks. Washington is a good football team. That's true. There is the man, Dapper. Impeccable. Yeah, Ernie Stoddard, Gene Stallings, Jim Myers, his coaching staff there. All those guys really do work well together. I think the key to any organization is, you know, Tom obviously is at the top of that pyramid, but he's got a lot of really talented guys that are involved with that organization that do a good job. The Redskins bring in their rookie running back from the 35, Ricky Clapp. From Bethune Cookman, but Buddy Hardeman gets the call. And Hardeman out to about the 35 yard line. Ball was dead. That was old Big Too Tall's arm reached out over that file. So give me that ball. <laughs> too Tall Jones. He never nine, got a 260 chance. pounds. He yeah. never got a chance to fight Roberto Duran, did he? No. Did you see any of his fights, Howard? I saw two of them, unfortunately. <laughs> well, we'll pursue that no further. E. Jones. He might pursue us. <laughs> Second down and eight. Clarence Harmon comes back in. The rookie clock goes out. Theismann wants a bundle of it. And John McDaniel was saying that he was interfered with. Yeah, and he gets a smile from the official, and that's all. Yeah. And the, inter and the referee says, yeah, you maybe have been, but you're also were about 10 yards short of getting there. There is Wilson in front of McDaniel. And Daniel says, I'm not going to run for that one. That's overthrown anyway, so I'm going to see if I can negotiate an interference call. Which he fails to do, so it'll be third down and eight. The ball back at the 35-yard line. 4.05 remaining in the game, 17-3. The Cowboys leading the Washington Redskins. Remind you again, Thursday night. It'll be Tampa Bay and Los Angeles, and we'll be there. the first down up to the 44 yard line good throw defensively Tony Dickerson the rookie from SMU was there for Dallas Dickerson actually played some Canadian football 
but looking he missed all of the 79 season before coming in as a free agent this year for Dallas. Looking back, Gipper, I'm still mystified by Washington's game plan in the first half when they insisted on running, <laughs> which is so hard to do against Dallas, and trying to run without John Riggins. John Dutton comes in defensively now for Dallas. He is at left tackle on first and ten. Fosman puts it up, incomplete. He was intended for Art Monk. A little bit high. We can get our director, Chet Forty, to focus in on John Dutton. He's had a problem moving from defensive end to defensive tackle. And more than that, he was a three-time All-Pro Pro Bowler for the Baltimore Colts before going to Dallas last year, but he played defensive right end. Dallas moved him over to replace Ed Jones. And in the complicated moves that Landry expects on defense, he just really didn't adjust to it. He's in there now, number 78, a left tackle for Dallas. Second down and 10. Almost picked off. Intended for flat, the flag goes down. Flag is down in an area that usually generates a holding call. Once again, you're right, Shake. Sometimes Shake amazes me, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. You're getting hot. No. 3.14 on the clock. You have always amazed me. Yeah, that's a good point you made about John Dutton. We extolled Gil Brandt early in the game, and he deserved it. 73 offense, holding, still second down. Jeff Williams having a big night for Washington in the holding department. Gil has faced criticism in Dallas because of the Dutton trade, giving away two top draft choices. Yeah, it's so unlike Dallas to do that. They, you know, historically have been a team that said, we're going to build through the draft. Belt. Home, homegrown. Yeah, homegrown folks. They might good. be criticizing him for that, but his next five picks made the team. <laughs> Second down and 20. Once again, shake your legs. Look out. Oh, and into the crowd almost picked off by Wilson. Intended for Du Bois. Harvey Martin putting the pressure on Joe Theismann. You didn't find my story about Theismann interesting at all when he used to be when Theismann. When he used to be Theismann. And he came in. It to uh, Theismann yeah. so it would rival with Heisman. And they had bumper stickers, you know, Theismann for Heisman. And who was it that he was runner-up to for the Heisman Award? Glad you had. Jim Plunkett. Yeah. Thank you very much. I knew all of And who drafted him in the NFL? had it all set. Miami drafted him in the NFL, and he goes to Canada, and he, was, uh, he took Toronto, I believe it was, to the Grey Cup for the first time since 1952. You amazed me. Yeah, well, I made a lot of that up. Third down, 20. Over the middle, this completes to Buddy Hardeman. Hardeman stretches out. Moves over the 45-yard line. It'll be fourth down at about eight, and a flag is down. So we're going to have another holding call. The Redskins once again. It, this is the time of the game where everybody's getting tired, and you're going to have more holding calls because they're just tired of sitting there trying to get that basic football, you know, fundamental football position. They call. And then they start holding a little bit. Again, the call. That's what happens. Yeah, oftentimes. 75 offense, holding, third down. Now they're spreading the holding around. This is Terry Hermeling over the left side. I mentioned the Tampa Bay game and the Los Angeles game coming up Thursday night. How about this? Got a big special there. Big special. Monday night football fever. Ten years. This tonight, the advent of our 11th year of Monday night football. Third and 30. Not an enviable spot for a quarterback against Dallas. Completes it to Harmon. Good pass by Theismann and Harmon carries it out to the 43 before being upended by Clink Scale, the rookie from South Carolina State. The host of that show, by the way, Gipper, an old friend who played center for Florida State, undersized at the position, the guy who looks so suspiciously like Rocky Blyer, whom he plays in the forthcoming ABC movie, Fighting Back, and of course, the star of ABC's hit show, Vegas, a fellow named Robert Urich. I remember him well. What ever happened to him, Howard? He yeah. just happens to be in the <laughs> studio. I love it. Dan Tanner. The booth is our studio, Robert. Back to the action gap. It's fourth down and 12 of the Redskins. A little more than two minutes remaining in the game. Buddy Hardeman drops the football incomplete. Dallas will take over at the Redskins 43-yard line. It's a clean scale again over there. Not bad for a rookie defensive back. He hasn't been far off all night. Third 
Vince Gale, who of course fills in as the fifth man. And we look at a live shot of Roger Staubach staying up late in Dallas watching the action. Two minutes and four seconds remaining in this football game. The Dallas Cowboys are commanding 17 to three lead over the Washington Redskins. Danny White comes back out. Jones is just back into the eye formation. And Jones takes the football and somehow rather speaks three or four yards out of it down to the 39 yard line. And we will get the two minute warning. And Dallas continuing to move the ball on the ground, working on that clock. I'm then. No smiles, but he missed White. This is the big guy, binoculars and all, Dan Tanner of Vegas, Robert Yurick. You can see all the way to North Hollywood with these things. How'd you like Monday Night Fever, the very, show that'll be seen very Thursday exciting. I've got a great idea. I just thought it'd be a great idea if uh, we got Frank to invite you and Danny Dunn and, uh, and, and uh, I over to his house, and we'll talk about the first 10 years of Monday Night Football. You think it's a good idea? I think it's a great idea. Why don't we do that Thursday? I think it will work okay. very well. Right before the Tampa Los Angeles game. All right, we're about all to right, go right. back to action. What do you think of this game? Well, I'd say that the Redskins were up to their chin straps and alligators tonight. <laughs> and they're, all, and they're all snapping at him, too, Bob. Indeed, Dallas performing very well. A lot of unknown quantities coming into tonight. They have a few proven quantities now. Second down and eight. 159 remaining in the game. This is Jones. Jones looks good. Mississippi State rookie turns the corner and he gets down to the 30 yard line. He looks good, Frank. I'm a little surprised. I have. Of course, his first time seeing him play, but he's had a heck of a night tonight. He's got good quickness, good instincts to move. Another thing we haven't talked about either, Preston Pearson not being with Dallas Absolutely. this year on the injured reserve. That's right. And, of course, he was a great receiver, but they feel they can get that from Ron Springs. And, of course, those are the sad faces depressed of the group. Redskins. Very depressed and understandably so. We get the feeling under Jack Pardee that when these two teams meet again November the 23rd, there'll still be a lot on the line. Butch Johnson, 86 in motion. Ron Springs gets the call. You know, Butch Johnson, you talk about, he's a proud papa. I believe it was as of last night, and he's got him for Butch Johnson Jr. He's a proud papa out there. Butch is a heck of a wide receiver. I think he's a terrific yeah. player. He complains sometimes about not playing full Well, time, he feels he's underused, and you know, he's got a point. Well, uh, it's just the, the point is they only have places for two of those folks, so they have three of them that are really good. When you remember the touchdown catch he made in the Super Bowl game yeah, against that Denver, was extraordinary. I mean, it was just one of the great catches. And these Cowboys go to Denver next week to play the Broncos, who played the Philadelphia Eagles. They really the Eagles. got racked up by the Eagles. And next week, Washington will be in against the Giants in New York. On second down and eight, getting the call is Jones over the left side. Getting inside the 25-yard line, where it'll be third down and four. There you see it. ABC News Nightline, 30 minutes right after this game. 11.30 on the West Coast. See how well I read those graphics? Boy, that's pretty caught on. Thank you. And Washington will let it run out. And they will lose their season opener 17 to 3 to the Dallas Cowboys. Their nemesis for so many years in the Eastern Division of the NFC. And Tom Landry off to another winning start. Is this the 16th year in a row for them to win their opener? I think it is. 16 years that they have won their opening game. They've had 14 consecutive years.